one of the big things we want to tell you about is energy system optimization. So for many years, LEAP has supported a wide choice of methods, including both simulation and optimization. But until now, LEAP was limited to doing only partial optimization of a single sector in an energy system. So most people typically use that to look at capacity expansion and dispatch in the electricity generation sector. But then all of the other transformation sectors you would have to model using basic simulation approaches. So in other words, you had to tell LEAP what you wanted to happen, what pathways you wanted to follow in all of those other sectors. Only, LEAP would only optimize and calculate a pathway within the electricity generation sector. So LEAP, the new version of LEAP now supports full energy, full least cost energy system optimization. So it allows you to look, it allows you to calculate optimal least cost pathways in both in in all of the transformation sectors, so all of the energy supply sectors, so not just electricity generation, but you can also look at what's the optimum holistically across all of the supply sectors, whether that be oil refining, whether it be hydrogen production, whether it be transmission and distribution, it can look at all of those together and calculate a least cost pathway. The way it does that is by taking full advantage of the capabilities of NEMO. So NEMO is a companion tool to LEAP. It's uh, an optimization framework that's been developed here at SEI by my colleague, Jason Vasey, who I, I don't think is on the call today. He's on vacation this week. But LEAP now takes much more advantage of the full capabilities of NEMO. NEMO is a really important uh, optimization framework for us. Um, it's written using Julia, which is a modern programming language specifically designed for things like optimization modeling. And one of the really nice things about it is it does support multiple solvers. So Leap can work with both free open source solvers and built into Leap, we have a number of those a number of those free open source solvers, um, but you can also use in really fast industrial strength solvers, things like CPLEX and uh, Jurobi and Mosec and Express as well. So it can work with a wide range of solvers. So LEAP does now take full advantage of that to allow you to do full energy, least cost uh, energy system optimization. And in addition to optimizing all of the supply sectors, what we call transformation in LEAP, you can also use this new this new system to optimize selected demand sectors. So wherever you've got a useful energy demand, you can also use LEAP to optimize that. And it can also look at both pipeline and transmission networks. So you can integrate modeling of transmission and pipelines into your least cost energy system. These new capabilities are important for modeling. I think they're really important as we start modeling really much deeper decarbonization scenarios where you're not just making marginal changes around a baseline, but you're really trying to reconfigure the energy system. So for example, you can now specify overall constraints on greenhouse gases and other pollutants and calculate the least cost system that meets those constraints. And a really important point here, in the past, these capabilities have only been available in really complex and expensive modeling tools. And they, that's tended to make them impractical to apply for planners in most countries. But what we've done in the new version of the LEAP is we've tried to implement them in ways that make them extremely straightforward to apply. For example, you don't have to go through the step of specifying a reference energy system in LEAP. That's calculated implicitly within LEAP. So it's really easy to set up this system and use it in LEAP. And also when doing it in LEAP, you can take full advantage of the data you've already entered into LEAP for your other scenarios. And you can take full advantage of all the data management and results visualizations in LEAP. So all the results can be viewed directly within LEAP in standard formats familiar to planners. And then lastly, I just mentioned that this new methodology of, of full energy system optimization, it's you can do it uh, on a scenario by scenario basis. So you can do some scenarios with partial optimization, some scenarios that are just using simulation, but then you can also compare those to scenarios that use full energy system optimization. So that's really goes beyond what an, any other modeling tool can do, I think. And I'm now going to, how am I doing time-wise, Sylvia? I'm going to try and show you some of that now. You're doing good. You still have 10 more minutes. Okay, good. Thank you. So I want to show you, uh, I'm going to go back to this light view now. I want to show you a data set um, that um, 
that shows some of those features with optimization in it. So I'm going to open up this optimization demo data set in Leap. So this is, this is a data set I may have, some of you may have seen this data set before. It's a data set that just tests out using optimization and you can see it's a pretty standard data set. We have different sectors on the demand side. Um, it's driven, it's, it reflects a fairly large country. And then we have a, a bunch of different electric generating technologies on the supply side. We've also got things like transmission distribution hydrogen production and electricity generation. And you can see we've got a bunch of different technologies there. We've got nuclear, wind, solar, coal, hydro, natural gas combined cycle and gas turbine. And we've also got energy storage. So a typical way that people have used LEAP in the past is maybe just putting, using the simulation methods and just manually specifying future pathways. So we've got an example of that here, just what some place where we've put these official plans in about the growth of demands and, and how the electricity system might change over time. And that's, and you can see here, there's a bunch of variables that specify that. So there's a variable called exogenous capacity where you specify current capacity. <coughs> and there's another one where you put in what's called endogenous capacity, where you say, these are the plants I want to build in the future. And when we look at the results for that, let me see if I can make sure I'm showing you there. So here we can see a future pathway for generation just using this simple simulation approach. So these methods have been available in LEAP for many years. You can see here we've got a system where we've got a, a range of different generating technologies. We've got some nuclear plant that exists currently but is due to be phased out. And you can see in this simulation uh, scenario basically we're relying in the future mainly on building new natural gas plants okay so the first thing you can do with optimization is to turn on partial optimization it's very easy to do that you just come down here you select you, we've created a scenario called partial optimization it's based on our official plan so for the most part it uses all the same data as that simulation method but what it does is it turns on partial optimization. So up here at the point of modeling electricity generation, we can switch that on. There's just a variable called optimize. And literally all you have to do is change that value from no to yes. And when you change it to yes, you're basically telling Leap to optimize that particular module of electricity generation. It uses almost all the same variables but it adds in some additional variables. So for example, it adds in um, constraints that let you set the minimum or maximum allowable capacity or the minimum and maximal, maximum production from different power plants. So hardly anything to do in terms of defining it. When we look at the results for that, you can see that as soon as we turn on energy system optimization, it's building a different set of power plants, right? So now it, when, it, when it's left up to leap, it chooses to build a lot more wind, a lot more solar, not as much of the natural gas. OK, but that's only doing optimization here. So this new feature in leap allows you to do optimization across the whole energy system. So to do that, it's again, pretty simple. We just come up to the very top level branch in the model. And there's a variable here called energy system optimization. And we just change that from no to yes again. So I've just typed in a yes there. And when we do that, it does this similar kind of thing, except that it's doing it across all of these modules. So here, for example, we'll have variables for constraining and optimizing hydrogen production. Here we'll have variables that allow LEAP to choose between different kinds of transmission distribution. There's also variables down here under resources. So you can say, what's the cost of your different fuels? You might have different costs for imports versus exports. You might have different, you might have a maximum available reserves of different fuels. That will all be part of the optimization calculation in LEAP. And you can even optimize down here under demand. So here, for example, I haven't set that up in this particular model, but you might have different useful demands like space heating or air conditioning, and you can specify to whether you want to optimize those devices as well. And if you do, you will have to put in a little bit more data, but it will build on all of the data that you've already created in Leap. So it's pretty simple to do this. So let me just show you some results for that. <laughs> So here's a, here's a scenario where I have turned on energy system optimization. 
and you can see it actually hasn't changed the results that much. In fact, let me show you that compared to a scenario without. Let's look at what's the differences, or let's look at what we've avoided versus a scenario with, with just the official plans. So it's 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 avoiding quite a lot of um, a generation because we're doing some efficiency. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't make a huge difference. But where this where this technique is really going is really going to come into play is that now you can set system wide prices and system wide caps on, for example, carbon. So if you want to now, you could set a, for example, uh, if I look up here, for example, you could set a, a price for carbon and that will factor into how Leap chooses between the different technologies. So it will incorporate that externality value into all the choices it makes about building and operating different power plants. So here, for example, I have no, no value for carbon. There is an externality for these other pollutants. But in this regular energy system optimization model, there's no carbon price. But here's a scenario where I have added in a price. So here I've said after 2025, 20, um, we're going to be paying $200 per tonne of CO2. So that's the only change I've made relative to this uh, this this scenario here. And if we look at the results, you should be able to see quite a bit of difference. So let me, I think I've got a saved one here. If I can find it, GHG is by scenario, is that it? Yeah, so here's the, here's, so the, the overall greenhouse gas emissions from that, um, from all of these different scenarios in 2050. Let me see if I can make that a bit better. So you can see the official plans that were mainly reliant on natural gas had very high emissions. And then as we did partial optimization, it was choosing, it was on its own choosing a different set of technologies that have lower emissions. We can also add in some baseline efficiency. We can look at the impacts of storage and then doing full energy system optimization brings it down further. But then once we start adding a price or setting a uh, carbon cap, we're really starting to bring the emissions down further. And it's really, then it's looking very holistically and doing the optimization across all of those different scenarios. How am I doing, Sylvia? I've got two minutes left. About three minutes. Just in time. Okay, good. Okay, so that's um, that's just a hint of what you can do with energy system optimization. But I did want to just show you one more feature related to that, which is which is the, the features related to transmission and distribution. So I'm going to open up a different data set here where we've actually, um, whoops, excuse me, where we've, where we've made a multi-regional model. So in this model, I've basically taken that same model, but I've, but I've doubled the number of regions. You can see now I have a region north and a region south, and I want to test out the, the uh, what happens if we add the ability for the two regions to be connected. I made a few changes to, um, to the availability of fuels in the different sectors. So you can see in the north, if I think I can show it here, so in the north, it's just basically got unlimited potential to build these different um, fuels, wind, coal, uh, hydro, solar, that kind of thing. But in the south, I've just decided that the south is a place that doesn't have much renewable energy. So it doesn't have much hydro, solar and wind. Um, and if we look at the results for that, let's look at generation by year and region for so here's here's an optimized system and you can see the north is is able to build lots of wind so it's doing its generation by building lots of wind but this south doesn't have any of that so it has to rely on um, uh, building much more natural gas so what what if we could connect those two regions together so in this scenario down here here so with transmission i've built a scenario i've built in transmission between north and south so let me show you just and the way we've done that is we've set up a couple of transmission nodes. I've pretended that the north and south are basically, this is Buckingham Palace in London, and this is the Elysee Palace in Paris, and we're going to build a transmission, transmission line between those. I'm sure that um, King Charles won't mind if we put a transmission line in his backyard. So we've built two nodes, and then down here, we're going to build a transmission line that connects those two nodes. And I've set it with a very high capacity, 
this is a, a super transmission line between north and south. And then we're going to uh, allow Leap to choose whether or not to use that transmission line. So let's look at some results for that. And there's a, a bunch of data down here that once you switch on transmission modeling, you can enter some of the data for those transmission lines. So there's things like capital costs, losses, those kinds of things. When we look at the results, I know I'm running out of time rapidly here. So here, here was our outputs when we when we don't allow connection between the regions. Here's one where we do allow connection between the regions. And you can see there's much more, there's a bit more, well, actually a lot more generation from wind, but there's lower generation in the south. Um, uh, and basically that's because it's connecting the two regions instead. We could see that in terms of greenhouse gases. And you can see that this just just by enabling that this transmission line it really brings down re really brings down the overall emissions from the two areas together because now the south is making much more use of the of the of the low carbon generation from wind in the north and then this final scenario is one where i said okay let's have the transmission line but let's also have a transmission uh, let's have a, a carbon price and that gives even more incentive to build transmission and to connect the two regions so here you can see that the reduction in the emissions by allowing a transmission line. So that's just very high level results. If you want to, you can dig in to see even more details. You could look at the actual flows of energy. Why is that not working? There we go. So there's the flows of energy between North and South. So you can see in the first years, there's actually some flow from South to North, but for the most part now, there's a lots of flow of energy from North to South. And you can look at this detail. You can look at this in a lot more detail if you want to. You can actually look at the, how the flows change between the, all the individual time slices within a year, but that's just giving you the overall uh, view um, annually. So those are the kinds of things you can do with this new version of Leap that supports energy system optimization.